Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Today we are making buttermilk blueberry breakfast cake. This is phenomenal, it's delicious, and as a mom, it is a great way to sneak in extra fruit into the foods that my kids are eating. They are also very picky breakfast eaters, and so uh, breakfast cakes with fruit in them is something that they will eat. And we're gonna just jump right in. This is a super quick, easy, simple recipe. And um, we are going to need, you need flour, you need sugar, salt, vanilla, baking powder, two sticks of butter, um, you need buttermilk, you need lemon. If you don't have fresh lemon, lemon juice will work. You need blueberries, you can use fresh blueberries, you can use frozen blueberries. Um, at times I even use like a pie filling fruit. I don't use like a whole can. I'll use like maybe half a can if I don't have enough fresh fruit on hand. And then you need one egg. Um, I actually am using two eggs because my eggs are really small. They're farm fresh ones. And these ones happen to be super small. So I'm going to use two eggs instead of one, but you need one egg. So I'm going to start with my dry ingredients first. I want two cups of or yeah, two cups of flour. Took a second there. Two cups. There's one. There's two. And we want ha uh, a full teaspoon of salt. I was gonna say half teaspoon. It is a full teaspoon of salt. And we want two teaspoons of baking powder. There's one. There's two. And then we want one cup of white sugar. So I'm gonna fit in there, let me grab. My half cup. So you want one cup of white sugar. I'm using my half cup here. Uh, it's a little less. There we go. That is it for dry ingredients. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of mix this together a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and mix my wet ingredients. And again, you only want one large egg, but I am using farm fresh eggs. They're a little on the small side, so I'm going to use two. And because I'm using farm fresh eggs, I am gonna crack them into a separate bowl. You can never be too sure with the farm fresh eggs, so. All right, there is one egg. And I'll be honest with you, this egg actually looks a little interesting. I'm gonna grab a different egg. Farm fresh eggs, y'all. Okay, grab the different egg. Very important motto for cooking. If in doubt, throw it out. That egg was fine. That egg is fine. That first egg, it just had some different orange yellow coloring on I haven't really seen before, so I was gonna let it go. Give those just a little whisk. Okay, and then we have um, one teaspoon of vanilla. You know me, I love vanilla, love the taste. I usually add in a splash more than the recipe calls for. One teaspoon of vanilla and a sprinkle. Okay, I'm gonna mix this together. We're gonna go ahead and bring our dry ingredient bowl back in. I'm gonna put the eggs in. And we are going to measure our buttermilk we're gonna do a half cup of buttermilk. I love to bake with buttermilk. Um, 
I'm always one of those people, I'm like, what do I do with the rest of the container? Uh, coming up soon, I have a, uh, it's similar to like a Nashville hot chicken, um, but it's like a buttermilk hot buffalo chicken biscuit, chicken and biscuit sandwich. It's pretty tasty, but it, it uses up buttermilk. And then I will probably come up with another baking recipe to finish using up that spare buttermilk. Okay. That is in there. You have your two sticks of butter. You want your butter to be soft. So I kind of, I store my butter in the fridge, my sticks of butter. And so I kind of sort of half melt them in the microwave, uh, but not completely. Cause you don't want it to be completely liquid. You just want it to be soft. That is in there. We're gonna mix this together gently. I'm all about hand mixing. I like to use as few of dishes as possible when I'm in the kitchen because face it, I am a busy mom and I already do the dishwasher at least once a day, if not twice. So. I can sp smell the buttermilk, y'all. It is, smells delicious. Okay, so this recipe calls for the zest of one lemon. I'm gonna be honest with you. I use the lemon juice instead. Because I love blueberry lemon flavor. So I'm actually gonna squeeze this half of a lemon. This was a big lemon. All right, perfect. Don't need a ton. You just want that hint of lemon flavor that blends so well with blueberries. Mix that together a little bit. All we have left to add in is the blueberries and I save them for last because I don't want to squash them. You want them to soften and um, just kind of have that perfectly baked, melted texture to them. And you don't want them squished. That is pretty good. Okay, the recipe calls for two cups of blueberries. It's a little less, but that's okay. We're gonna mix those in, kind of just fold them in. You gotta be gentle with your fresh fruit. you're into baking and you're new, some of my more recent videos I've done, I've done peach cobbler muffins, which are phenomenal. We eat them up in like two days. Um, I've got apple crisp. That's a perfect fall recipe. And what else have we been making? Oh, cherry chocolate chip banana bread. So if you like baking, be sure to hit subscribe. I do all sorts of amazing recipes here, but if you're really into baking, make sure you subscribe to that playlist. This is perfect. I'm gonna go get my baking dish. All right, I sprayed my baking dish. I'm using a glass one today. Um, you can use um, bunt cake pans if you want. You can even turn these into actual muffins but I'm making a cake. So I'm just put all that in here. That is a heavy batter. I'll tell you it's on the heavy side. So if you have kids helping you out with this recipe, you might be the one to uh, hold the bowl here for them. If they are putting it into the baking dish. It smells so good. This is one of my favorite recipes to make. Um, just because it fills your house with the lemon aroma. We're going to just kind of, this is a thicker batter too, by the way, this is not like a super liquidy type of baking batter. All right. I'm just going to kind of, oh yeah, this is going to be yummy. All right. I'm going to go put it in the oven. Oh, probably at about 400 degrees, maybe 425. 
and I'm gonna check it in about seven or eight minutes, but I'm gonna guess it's gonna take about 15 to 17 minutes to bake in the oven. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Today I am doing a fun, easy breakfast. We're doing chorizo breakfast taco. Um, we have leftover taco stuff to use up and uh, we don't always do tacos with chorizo, but we happen to have some and it is so good with eggs. Um, so I thought why not share this with you. It's a super easy, quick recipe. Give you some ideas for breakfast or dinner for your family. So I have, we've already cooked up this chorizo. And so I'm just kind of reheating it in the skillet. And then I have a dab of butter going over here to do my scrambled egg. Let that melt in. And I have some diced red onion. And I'm actually going to just put a little bit over here in the corner. Kind of let that sizzle up. Get that flavor. Put our egg over here. And I'm going to go ahead and just swirl it. That's how you get your scrambled right there in the skillet. And that's going to cook here for a minute or so. I have some shredded Monterey Jack cheese. And I have my small soft tortilla shell. So I am going to go ahead and just put some cheese right there on the bottom as the first layer. When you do that and then add your meat on top, it helps your cheese to melt faster. If you want to, you could mix all of this up together. I probably will here in a minute, honestly. And then um, we actually visited an authentic Mexican uh, food grocery store. We had a new one open up not that far from us. And so we had picked up the chorizo. We had picked up a fancy, um, some really spicy hot sauce and authentic queso cheese. And I'm actually going to end up drizzling the cheese a scoop of this cheese right onto my meat for some extra cheesy yumminess. We're gonna spread this around. Let's just kind of mix that all together. This smells so good. This is a breakfast packed with protein. It's great for if you're like super hungry. All right, I think the egg is fully cooked. Let's turn this off. All right, and I'm gonna take my scrambled eggs, put them in there first. I'm gonna take my chorizo and cheese blend. I'm gonna add just a little bit of picante salsa. And there we go, a delicious chorizo egg breakfast taco. I'll be sure to uh, share with you a couple of other Mexican style breakfast recipes uh, that are absolutely delicious. Thank you all so much 
You'll find the link to pin and save this recipe in the description below, along with all the ingredients and directions. And we'll see y'all next time. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Thank you for joining us today. Today I am sharing with you um, a fun breakfast quiche variety style recipe. I call it kind of kitchen sink style breakfast using stuff we have on hand. Um, when I was at the store the other day, uh, we are doing chicken and dumplings for a dinner. And so I was at the biscuits, um, picking up the buttermilk biscuits for the chicken and dumplings. And I saw the new mini pie crust, the little quiche crust. And I was like, I gotta give these, whoa, I gotta give these a whirl. Um, so many things you could do with them. And so today I am using up, we have all sorts of stuff on hand. I've got olives and cherry tomatoes and ham cubes. Um, I did some spinach and ham tartlets that were amazing. Um, so I have a bunch of ham cubes. I've got shredded carrots. I've got diced bell peppers. I've got some bacon crumbles. And so I was like, perfect. These will make perfect breakfast quiches. So I've already done one batch. So um, in this box, you get two sheets of mini pie crusts, and it makes 14 um, of the little mini pies, I guess you could call it. Um, plus, there's a little bit of extra dough, so I think, honestly, you could make probably about 16 of them. And I love that you can just pull out all your, like, little topping ingredients, filling ingredients. Uh, it's a great breakfast for um, family. If you're ki having kids over, family over, people can kind of just pick and choose what they want in them, which is great. I'm going to kind of just plop this on my plate here. Um, this dough is already pre-perforated, um, and it's pretty easy to tear. I got the first batch of these going in the oven already. My oven, by the way, is set to 425 degrees. We're gonna just kind of pull these apart here. If you want to, you can leave the little extra crusts on. I'm gonna use them to make more of these little octagonal style. No, what are these? One, two, three, four, five, six little shapes. Um, you want to use your muffin pan. This is a regular muffin pan, not the mini ones. So, and then you wanna spray. I put some cooking spray into the tins uh, so that they don't stick. You want to just lightly press them in. I will put all of the directions and uh, ingredients into the description below. And I will also leave the link to the Pinterest pin so you can pin and save this recipe and come back to it later. I love Pinterest for recipes, especially as a busy mom when you're just like, can't think of ideas, quick ideas. You just open it up and scroll and ta-da, you got some idea for dinner or snacks. I'm going to take these extra little crust pieces and make a little crust for a couple of these. It may... The egg may kind of soak down in, but I'm gonna press the bottoms a little bit. I do have to say this, if you're going to use berry pie crust, they do have a saltiness in the crust. So do not add extra salt to whatever you are making because um, you can definitely taste the salt in the crust, in the breading. Perfect way to use up this dough. All right. So I am going to take my little muffin tins here, my little cups, and I have got a couple of tomatoes, grape tomatoes diced up. I'm gonna put I don't want tomatoes in all of them. We're gonna kind of just pick and choose. Again, you can do these however you want. I have some bell peppers. I like my veggies. If you want, you could do like hash browns and sausage. Put a couple peppers in these. It's 
grab my black olives. I personally love olives. Put it in like half of them. And um, I've got some diced ham cubes. Let's put that in quite a few of them. I know that my family really likes ham cubes. If you've got spinach or broccoli, you could put some of that in. All right, eh, let's add a few extra. And then I have some bacon bits. I'm gonna add those on top and I add the cheese on top as well, except for in this one, I'm gonna do one that's just cheese and egg. Got one picky eater. And I am going to use, um, in total, I have used, I'll be using six eggs. Again, I have the first batch of these in the oven and it used about two and a half of eggs. So I'm cracking three more, six total. You could probably get away with five eggs, maybe four. It depends how full you want your cups to be. We're gonna whisk these in the bowl here. If you've got a carton of egg whites, that also would be really easy to use. Great idea to use the egg whites up. Oh, she got a little full. And your eggs will rise as they bake, so you don't want you do not want to overfill it like I did on that one. Oh, and you can see I ran out because that one has twice the amount. Let me grab All right, now we're going to grab our cheese. You could use whatever cheese you want to. I've done sharp cheddar, mild cheddar, Colby Jack, mozzarella. I personally like to have mozzarella or shredded cheddar with my breakfast quiches, my eggs. I'm just gonna kind of do these half and halves. All right, I am gonna put bacon bits. If you've got actual crumbled bacon, perfect. I'm cheating, I have uh, a salad bacon bits to use up. And I think everybody in my family actually really likes bacon. So I'm gonna put it on all of them. I will link to my breakfast playlist. If you're looking for some other easy breakfast recipes, um, I have got a couple of French toast varieties, all sorts of muffin and pancake recipes. Okay, I'm going to put these in the oven and they cook for about maybe 10 to 12 minutes or so. Keep an eye on them. You don't want them to burn. Um, here are our breakfast quiches. This is just such an easy and quick breakfast brunch to put together for your family. And it definitely makes quite a bit, so it's nice for a small gathering as well. Thank you all so much for watching today. Thank you for sharing our recipes with your family and friends. We appreciate it so much, and we will see you all next time. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. This morning I am making mango pancakes. We love pancakes in our house. And while it's easy to use the box mix pancakes, homemade pancakes are so much tastier and healthier for you. 
and uh, they're really simple and easy and quick to make. So I am going to go ahead and uh, put all the ingredients and step-by-step -step instructions in the description below. Let's get started. So for my mango pancakes, I've got about a cup or so of fresh diced mango. Honestly, I just use one mango, peel it, dice it up, uh, put it in. And I'm going to put almost all, not quite all of it, but almost all of it into a larger bowl. I like to save a few pieces for the toppings of the pancakes. And then we are going to add in to here one fourth cup of white sugar. Um, so I have blended it into my Nutribullet, super easy, quick way to blend. Or if you've got a little food, food blender, and we're going to put this back into our bowl. Okay. Now we are going to add in two tablespoons of melted butter. And we are going to add in um, our egg. We got one egg. Use my little butter bowl here. And I'm going to do one teaspoon of vanilla. And we want one cup of milk. And then we are going to mix this together with our hand mixer. If you want to, you could probably just use a whisk or your spoon. Actually, we'll just use our spoon today. We're going to make it easy and simple. All right, now I'm going to use my spoon and I'm going to mix this together really well. And I'm going to grab a bigger bowl and I am going to put our dry ingredients in here. We're going to do one and three fourths cups of flour. We're going to add in a fourth teaspoon of salt. And we're going to do two teaspoons of baking powder. And if you would like to, you could add in a scoop of vanilla protein powder. I like to do that when we make pancakes or if we're doing like strawberry pancakes or blueberry, I'll add in whatever flavor protein powder matches the flavor of pancakes we are doing. And I'm going to grab my spoon and we're going to mix this together, get that salt and baking powder kind of blended in well. Now we're going to add the wet to the dry. These smell so good. I will a link to our breakfast playlist. I've got lots of breakfast recipes for you uh, that your family will love. Everything from buttermilk blueberry cake to muffins to breakfast casseroles 
egg recipes. Scrape the sides, make sure we get it all mixed in. All right, we are ready to take it to the skillet, make our pancakes. All right, I am going to cheat today. I am using a large ice cream scooper um, to scoop my pancake batter. You could use like a fourth or half cup measuring cup if you want. I have sprayed, that's gonna make a huge pancake, man. Um, I have sprayed my skillet. And, all right, I'm going to kind of pat these down just a little. We're going to let these cook. These nice flip. Oh, I have a amazing butter pecan pancake recipe. I will link to it. You have got to try it. It is so, so good. Um, I'm going to top these mango pancakes with some coconut and some of the fresh mango that I had set aside. You could add some pecans to the top. That would be really good with the mango. All right, we got our nice, big, fluffy mango pancakes. I am going to take some of the fresh mango we had set aside, place on top. We're going to add a little coconut. It's kind of a pina colada style pancake. Add a little syrup. Perfect. And there we have it. Mango pancakes. Family's going to love them. Thank you all so much for watching and liking our videos and for sharing them with your family and friends. Be sure to check out our In the Kitchen with Grace one Pinterest where you can save and pin all of our recipes and use them for your meal planning. We'll see you all next time.